certain problem. I would love you to. recognize there's a problem. I, I can't put words in your mouth, but I think most of us recognize that immigration isn't quite working in this country the way that it should. What, what is the solution in your mind, Tommy? Like, how do you, not, not just what are the problems, but how do we fix them? So, well, the first solution is to build a wall. And it's not because, it's not because I'm a Trumpian. It's not because Donald Trump said it and I believe it. It's because I've spent time with the men and women of Border Patrol and when the people that are out there on the front lines day in and day out say, if we had a physical barrier, our jobs would be much easier. We could dedicate resources other places. We need a physical barrier. And then for the Democrats to say, no, 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 we, it's a manufactured crisis. The Border Patrol agents that do this for a living, they don't really know what they're talking about. Walls, we don't need a, walls, that's not gonna solve the problem. You're completely dismissing people that do this for a living. These people are Republicans, these people are Democrats, these people, some don't care about politics. 50% Hispanic, Latino who are serving in Border Patrol and they say, we need a barrier, we need a wall. Every single one of them I talk to. So, so to say that that's not, doesn't work, you're saying these people don't know what the hell they're talking about. So I think solutions are incredibly important and I think that the left has been mischaracterized. You know, this whole notion of open borders is not something that's, you know, a widespread idea that's accepted by uh, people on the left. But I will say that part of the problem is that we always focus on what we can do, what kind of Band-Aid we can use to solve a, a giant gushing wound. And so, yes, there has been a migrant crisis, but we never ask what caused this migrant crisis? Why is there so much crime, you know, in the Northern Triangle? And we have to take responsibility as Americans for our actions abroad. So let me be specific. There are multiple actions we can take to root out crime in countries like Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala. For instance, over 200,000 guns from the United States travel south of the border into these Central American countries, which leads to crime. These cartels, these gang members use these guns, which by the way, are purchased legally in the United States at uh, gun shows and things like that. It helps them carry out the violence that's making these migrants flee. So we have to ask ourselves, yes, we have the Second Amendment. Yes, we should protect it. But what can we do to stop the flow of U.S. guns into Central American countries? One other thing, our drug war, our drug war has also fueled violence in these countries. So it's not enough to say we're just going to build a wall and be done with it. No, no you gotta unfortunately, stop the hemorrhaging. it's not going to work. You got to stop not the hemorrhaging because the majority of undocumented immigrants came here by flying in. Let me let me ask. So, let me ask this, and and Tommy and I have worked together before. She knows I am progressive, but I okay. So notice uh, Anna Kasparian brings up the fact that we don't always talk of the underlying issues with immigration. Uh, she discusses how the United States uh, there's a lot of weapons that go from our country down into. Uh, Central America, and that's not often discussed. Uh, she mentioned how you have, well, actually, she didn't mention this, but Bernie brings up in his book, Our Revolution, uh, the fact that uh, since NAFTA, poverty has skyrocketed in uh, Mexico. Uh, you have a lot of farmers that have been driven off their farms as you've had corn exports from the U.S. flood their markets. Uh, the U.S. subsidizes our farmers' corn where Mexico does not. And so our trade policies have impacted Canada. Uh, Anna Kasparian is right to bring that up because Tommy Lauren, to be honest, probably has no idea. Do you think that she's read a lot of books? Uh, she's attractive and she says a lot of the talking points that some of the older gentlemen who watch Fox News enjoy, and so they keep her around. Do my best to be fair, so I, I'll admit my bias here. Um, is there an argument that, I know that, I know that as, as liberals, as progressives, myself included, we often say that, you know, this wall would be a horrible um, message to send to our southern neighbors. Um, it, it would send a message that amounted to uh, discrimination based on race. I mean, that but ship has sailed. <laughs> if, but, right, but, but if, if we try to e extract that, let me just ask for devil's advocate's purpose. Is there not a world in where both the problems that you're talking about and the problems you're talking about could not be addressed at the same time. Is it worth it for Democrats to continue to oppose the wall specifically based on that? It almost sounds as if though a wall might be a Band-Aid 
arguably, but a Band-Aid in place while these other issues are addressed. Is it worth it for Democrats to continue to fight against the wall specifically, or is, could it be a part of a larger solution? Well, I think that Democrats and their messaging on the wall has been a failure. And the reason why I say that is because they are not doing a good job discussing the complexity of immigration and why there's a flow of migrants. Instead, they're focusing on the discrimination angle, they're focusing on the bigotry angle, and I get that, that's what gets the most attention. But in reality, like, they do need to talk about the complexities at hand, and that means talking about gun regulation. That means putting themselves out there to discuss solutions for very controversial issues that are related to immigration. I just and I don't address, think that they want to do that. I agree with you on that, but I also want to address, you keep going back to the Second Amendment, and I want to make sure I understand you correctly, because what it sounds like to me, and I'm sure to a lot of conservatives that are listening, is that we should infringe upon my Second Amendment rights so that they don't go to other countries south of our border and then that makes them come to our country illegally. I'm not going to so, give up my Second Amendment rights because we've got illegal immigrants that are trampling over our borders. So That's I think, not the solution that I hear most what you're Americans saying. I hear are. what you're saying. So I think that it's really important to understand that every constitutional right that we have has its limitations. I am supportive of the Second Amendment. However, there are certain loopholes that are helping to send these guns to Central America. So for instance, there was a wonderful piece recently written in um, The New Yorker that talked about a, a Floridian, a gentleman named Mr. Crumpler, I forget his first name, but he was buying a giant amount of guns at these gun shows, right? So you can go to a gun show, there's really no regulation, you could purchase as many guns as you want. And he was selling it to individuals from Honduras. And then he started realizing, mm, they keep wanting AR-15s, they want specific types of guns, who are these people, what are they doing with the guns? And finally he ended up working with the feds because he realized he was helping fuel the violence in these countries where all these migrants are, are fleeing. And so it's a very simple issue, just close the gun show loophole, that doesn't infringe you realize, on your rights, but you, do you realize that your gun. If you buy your gun from a firearms dealer, you still have to go through the, the background check. You realize that, right? That you I do. Just, I do, but I'm not talking about I'm not talking about buying it from a dealer. And even in the case of buying your gun at a dealer where you do a background check, there are loopholes to that process as well. So one of the ways that Dylan Roof was able to purchase a gun was, you know, the FBI literally has three days to do the background check. He went right before a three-day weekend, right? There was a federal holiday. And so the FBI didn't get back to the private seller in time. And at that point, the private seller, without doing a background check, uh, or having the FBI doing the background check can just sell the gun, right? So that's the reason why I'm saying you can still have access to your Second Amendment rights, to your guns, but there are certain laws that just make sense, certain loopholes that we should cut or get rid of in order to ensure that guns don't end up in the wrong hands. And we can have, we can have... She's right to bring up Dylan Roof, being able to obtain a gun that way. Again, just a reminder, Dylan Roof uh, was the kid that went in in South Carolina and killed a bunch of uh, people of color in a church. Have those conversations, but when you when you have people like candidates from your party saying we're going to confiscate your guns, we're going to send the police to knock on your door and confiscate your guns, that's problematic. But before we get into the full Second Amendment thing, I do want to go back to immigration because you talked about some of the problems and how we're not addressing the problems and we're not providing solutions. I think the wall is a solution. I don't think that's the only solution. We need to change our asylum laws so that people that are actually seeking asylum are able to see those judges in a timely manner, and they're not right now because anybody is coming across the border. Which, by the way. It, you're not claiming asylum if you come into this country illegally and then raise your hands and say, I'm claiming asylum. You claim asylum at a port of entry. That is not the so case. So, what do we do when Border Patrol agents are literally blocking ports of entry to prevent because them from coming because in they're, legally? They're, what do we do? I, they're, because they're that's blocked. the thing. Let me, let, Trump has I, gone out get, of his do way to, to do away with legal means to claim asylum. Can I, and can so, I, look. I don't know what your family values are, but my family values are, if my family is in jeopardy, if their lives are at risk, I will do anything and everything to get them to safety. Let's let, let's let Tommy have a chance to, to yeah, respond like to that, to, too. I'd like to be able to finish my full thought here. Okay. Go ahead. So you've got asylum laws and you people that are actually... And so she brings up the point that Trump was blocking the way for those individuals seeking asylum. That's something that Tommy Lauren didn't mention. She also brings up the fact that most people 
would do the same thing. Uh, if their family was in danger, they would be seeking that. If you like this video and others on history politics, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.